I call the Honourable Member Brendan Horan. Thank you, Mr Speaker. We're having this debate because the Prime Minister sacked Peter Dunn from the committee, and not as he tried to spin it because some mysterious rules require it, sir, but simply because John Key wanted Peter Dunn outski from the committee, and that's the sole reason. The Prime Minister can nominate any two MPs to the committee, <coughs> subject to the endorsement of Parliament. And the motion that under Section 11 of the Intelligence and Security Committee Act 1966, this House endorsed Tony Ryle as a member of the Intelligence and Security Committee, nominated by the Prime Minister under Section 7.1c of the Act. So the question today, sir, is should we endorse Tony Ryle? I'll come to that in a minute. And having done so, I will then be moving an amendment to the motion. I note that other speakers have raised the very real issues around oversight of the Government Communications Security Bureau and the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service, and that is the, uh, their full title. Um, the short version would be the spooks. And uh, spooks by nature operate in the shadows, furtively, secretively. And, sir, I can see the Minister attributes, uh, attributes in, these eros, uh, in these areas echo appeal. Um, after all, who earned the dial secret smile? Tony Ryle. But my concern, sir, is the Minister is liable to capture by bureaucrats. <coughs> Let us look at Tony Ryle. We've found in recent weeks and months that he is very vulnerable to capture by bureaucrats. He becomes the mouthpiece of those departments rather than the champion of hard-working Kiwis. And, sir, let's look at some specific examples. Diabetes. Already, uh, since I, I mentioned on Facebook that I would be speaking today, I've had a number of people calling in, and they are calling him denial Ryle. Now, the Minister of Health funds only the CareSense metres, and many diabetics are finding serious problems with these metres, sir. A 20% variation for a, a child could mean death. The care sense meters do not have a backlight. There's concerns about testing strips. Sir, yesterday I'm concerned about the Minister's intelligence because when asked the question about the number of people that had concerns, he said 14. But, sir, just in the past four days, right here in my hand, are thousands of comments from people concerned about the care sense meters for diabetes. And there are heartbreaking stories in here, sir. There's intelligence here of a mother with a young child who, while she was driving him to the hospital, had to pull over to the side of the road and give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Sir, there is a story in here of an elderly gentleman who was, uh, whose wife was having a hypoglycemic event and the worry and concern of that elderly gentleman. There's a lot of intelligence in here, sir, but it seems to have escaped the minister who has adopted a hear-no-evil, see-no-evil approach. So is that minister appropriate for this commi for committee? <coughs> sir, because this minister doesn't seem to want to know intelligence. But here's just a simple week's worth. But, sir, I'm, I'm hoping that Pharmac have intelligence, and I trust that they will, because I know that there are people leading Pharmac who care, and I know that they will stop some of the inane answers that people have received when they have written to Pharmac on, on their uh, feedback, uh, diabetes feedback line and received messages when they've said they're concerned that their machine isn't working and the feedback they've got or the lack of intelligence there has been, oh, put the meter under your armpit and warm it up. Now, where's the intelligence in that? We're moving into winter. The end of this month is going to be severely cold. And uh, what about all the diabetics and, and how they're going to test their blood sugar levels this winter, sir? There should be real concern here because there is real intelligence about this. And I would ask that Pharmac cast their people to it immediately and come up with a solution. But I do have confidence that the leaders of Pharmac will do that because where there has been need in other areas, they have acted appropriately. But therefore, we come to our minister who is, I guess, a ghost minister. So again, I can see how the title fits, how he might be able to get into that Security and Intelligence Committee, because he is a ghost minister indeed. I refer also to an example of him being a ghost minister, where the Tauranga mother with the uh, very ill child went to see Mr Rao. 
as Minister of Health. And Mr Ryle said, well, I'm actually seeing you today as your electorate MP and I'm going to have to write a letter to myself as the Minister of Health. So we do have a ghost minister there. So again, he does have certain attributes in that area. Now, that small girl, sir, was denied a life-saving operation or money for a life-saving operation because that young girl had to go overseas. Where was his intelligence there, sir? Where, where, where was the security or the thought for that small girl? His intelligence told him that the girl couldn't be cured. And so he didn't fund the trip, but guess what? The solo mother went to the community, raised the money, sent that little girl over to the States, and now she's going to St Thomas More School, sir, and she is alive and well, no thanks to the intelligence or the security of Denial Ryle. <coughs> order, order. Can I just sort of say to member that uh, name calling by and large comes through frustration, and, and that's understood, but it is out of order as a personal reflection, and I refer the member to uh, Standing Order 117, um, and also Speaker's Ruling 28 bar 1, because it can actually lead to disorder. And also remind the member that, that no good comes from personalised attacks, as it brings Parliament into disrepute. And I would urge members to play the ball and not the man. Thank you, sir. I, I, I'll note that. And I, I don't mind apologising and withdrawing that comment, because I, I meant it as a friendly moniker. Found it on Facebook. <laughs> But, sir, let's have a look at the New Zealand Public Health and Disability Amendment Bill, which was trumpeted as, quote, paying family carers, when the reality was it was paying less than the minimum wage to a bare handful of families. And, Mr Speaker, that means there must be real questions as to whether Tony Ryle is an appropriate person to be endorsed to be part of democratic oversight of intelligence and security. And whilst we're thinking about security, sir, we're... The Honourable Mr Ryle is the electorate MP for the Bay of Plenty. That's right, PSA, rife. Went through the area under his watch. Where was the security or the intelligence there, sir? If it wasn't for Zespri, our number, one of our main um, uh, export earners in this country would be down and out. So where was our ghost minister there? Well, he was. He was a ghost minister. Hands off. And, sir, let's take a look at the RENA. <laughs> yes, that's right. Where's the intelligence for the RENA, sir? Where, where, sir, is the security? What happens, what happens, sir, if, if a ship wrecks on that very same reef tomorrow? Well, guess what? There's not much room for it because there's still a wreck on the rock just about two years after the incident when that government over there promised that they would remove the RENA from Tauranga. And guess what? There's still pollution leaking from that, but we don't know about that because we cannot get out there and go under and dive on Astrolab Reef, which should be every New Zealander's right, because there's still this aura of secrecy there. So again, there are certain attributes that the Minister exhibits that are fine there. <coughs> there's also solid energy, sir. Uh, where the, he is responsible for as the Minister of State-Owned Enterprises, and which is a total basket case, but the Minister is still digging. But, sir, I conclude, when asking whether Tony Ryle is an appropriate person, I conclude the answer is no, and so I move an amendment to delete all the words after that and to substitute the words, this House invites the Prime Minister to submit a fresh nomination to the Intelligence and Security Committee. Mr Speaker, I urge the House to adopt this amendment. The question is that the amendment be agreed to. Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Ian Lees-Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker.